Dear Mojang, Hi! It's me! Austin! I'm changing meds right now, like, right now. I am in the middle of it. Goodbye, Sertraline. Hello, Wellbutrin. Let's do this! <laughs> Ah! No, I, I am I am just kidding. I just literally got my second Pfizer dose on top of all of this. I feel like crap. But we are here. We're doing this. I'm playing Minecraft because it's the thing I do when I don't know what to do with my life. I think I've said this before, but I'm like the most basic Minecraft player on Earth. Other than I'm rather fond of hardcore mode, I guess. Uh, the only thing I really like to do is the same stuff I liked to do when I first got the game back before the 1.0 release. I like to just sit and farm and simulate a simple provincial life. I try to make sure that I never I never have to worry about food, shelter, or monsters, and I tame the world around me to make it like a haven. And sometimes I build long tunnels with trolleys or whatever, but point is, I'm definitely not one of those guys who gives two bananas about killing ender dragons or omega turbo whites or whatever. I'm just the guy trying to make as much bread and cheese as I can. Wait, is there, is there cheese in Minecraft? Let me look real quick. Huh. No, there, there is not cheese in Minecraft. You added water zombies into the game before adding cheese. No, no, I know, it's, it's your game, do what you want, I'm just, just saying. People like cheese, it's very popular, might wanna like, just get in on that, it's all, it's all I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, since all of my pursuits are basic and provincial, all the things I think about are basic and provincial. All the things that I stare at and consider and ponder and prepare to nitpick. Like the absolutely absurd eating habits of the Minecraft protagonist. That's right, we're going there right now. We're doing this. A whole freaking episode about eating food in Minecraft. And no, I'm not just making this video because it's almost dinner time when I'm writing the script. Hey. Hey, well, Butrin, um, so like, you know how I've been on selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors exclusively for like, phew, a really long time now, like almost a decade, maybe close, a, a long time. So, um, you may not be aware, they've actually helped like, uh, dull the edges of my personality a little bit. Keep me, uh, yeah, yes, I'm aware that my earlier episodes were, look, I know they were a lot. Okay. But I've mellowed since then. And I was even more before that. Anyway, not the point. Do you think you could, like, chill out a little bit with my, like, extreme... Uh, you can't. You're a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor and therefore work totally differently from something that blocks the reuptake of serotonin. Woo! Boy, we are in for some wild of a ride tonight! Yee freaking ha! Okay, so food in video games has always been a little goofy, even in games that are supposed to somewhat mimic real life, like The Long Dark, Fallout New Vegas Hardcore Mode, Fallout 4 Survival. It's not just Skyrim where you can eat 500 wheels of cheese. Hey, cheese, Mojang! Cheese. Anyway, eating 500 wheels of cheese in order to gain back health quickly in an emergency, food in video games is never truly realistic. You don't usually get full, and with some specific outliers aside, you never really gain weight due to overeating. Food in these situations is more like a meter that you have to keep track of and balance, a resource like health or like a timer. And it's fine! I don't hate it at all, I actually kind of love it, but it does have some extremely weird implications, and we're looking at those today with Minecraft, right now, anytime. The hunger mechanics in Minecraft are actually surprisingly complicated. Let's just go through them one by one and you'll see what I mean. There's the food level, which is the thing you're probably the most used to seeing. It's uh, these uh, things. What are they? Chicken drumsticks? Glasses of wine? Like, anyway, doesn't matter. There's 10 drumsticks, but there's actually 20 points in total, since each drumstick can be either half full or entirely full. So if I say 20 hunger at any point in this video, know that I'm talking about a full bar of chimkin. When you have over 17 food points, your health regenerates every food tick, which we will get to eventually. If you're below six points or three chimkins, you can't sprint anymore. If there's zero, you lose half a health point per hunger tick. Here's where things get really interesting. Have you ever noticed in Minecraft that like not all foods are created equal, even if they restore the same amount of food points? Well, that's because that is absolutely the case. Not all foods are created equal. That's because of hunger 
Predator's second, arguably most important and devilishly hidden mechanic, food saturation. Food saturation is generally invisible, but it's arguably more important than hunger level, and it's basically how much food reserves you have when it comes to keeping the food level and the hunger bar from ticking down. In short, it's actually how hungry you are. Every food item in the game has a total separate food saturation value aside from its food level. An apple, for instance, will restore four food points, or two little chimpkins, but only 2.4 saturation points. A baked potato, by contrast, will restore only one more food point than the apple, but 3.6 more saturation points. And why is that important? Well, in order to understand that, we're gonna have to look at the next secret, although easier to understand mechanic. Food exhaustion. Food exhaustion is ultimately what makes your character hungry. There's not a ton of things that actually cause exhaustion, but most of them are tied to some of the most common activities in the game. Swimming, for example, is 0.01 point per meter of exhaustion. Jumping while sprinting is 0.2 per meter. Regenerating health from food is a whole freaking six per half a heart. Food poisoning is a little bit more complicated and each one seems to be different, so I'm not gonna go there. Several things don't increase exhaustion though, which is kind of interesting. There's no exhaustion taken by just standing still or even walking, interestingly enough. But what do all these numbers mean? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Exhaustion points take away food saturation. Every time you reach a total of four, a single point is removed from the food saturation level. For example, let's say it's nighttime on day one and you forgot to build your first mud hut because you're just a forgetful idiot. And now you see monsters showing up, so you begin to run, not walk, you run this way. You run 10 meters and hit a river. There's a creeper coming, so you have no choice but to swim across. You get across the river, which was five meters or blocks wide. Good job. You now have to jump over an obstacle and then, uh-oh, you see more creepers coming. Time to run some more. You sprint 10 more meters, jumping over a couple lava pits that are in the way so you don't get slowed down going around them. You think you're safe and then you get pinged in the head by an arrow. Ouch! Where'd that come from? Ouch! A skelly boy over there. You kill him. You hit him 11 times before he goes down, but not before he gets one more arrow into you. And it's daytime. Whew, you made it. All of that, all of those individual things, taking three hits, sprinting, swimming, jumping while sprinting, etc., cost you exhaustion points. Exactly four, it turns out. And because you hit four points of exhaustion, you will lose one saturation point until you don't have any more saturation points left. Then, and only then, will it deduct points from your hunger bar. The food tick timer, meanwhile, the last mechanic, is arguably the least important, but it may become important for timing later. It's simply the timer that decides when things related to hunger happen. Every four seconds, if you took damage and need to heal and you have over 17 food points, you regenerate half a heart. If you have food poisoning, saturation points are taken away every four seconds, and if you're at zero food, you lose half a heart every four seconds. Pretty easy to understand. So this all sounds complicated, so here is a refresher. And it's easier if you think of it as though you have two fuel tanks and activity meters and a timer. There's the food level fuel tank and the food saturation level fuel tank. The food saturation level tank is the first tank that you will draw from and until it is totally exhausted to empty, the food level tank will never go down. And both tanks won't go down until the activity bar, the exhaustion level, fills up entirely. At which point it will drop down to zero and one ounce or whatever of fuel will leave the saturation tank. If there's no fuel in the saturation tank, then it will be taken from the food level tank tank. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now there is a timer here, which is your food tick timer, which takes away health or heals you, whichever, every four seconds if needed. This is the engine, the motor, the entire ecosystem of the hunger mechanics of Minecraft. It's pretty complicated and most of it is under the hood, which, you know, is absolutely fine. You don't need to see all this in order to have fun playing the game. That being said, if that's the case, then why did I waste literal minutes trying to explain all this to you? Well, because actually it's extremely important 
important if we're going to unpack the absolutely bizarre and inane eating habits of the Minecraft protagonist. Also, if I had read all this to begin with, I wouldn't have wasted time having my avatar sit in a mud house for an hour to see how long it would take him to starve to death. It's never gonna happen, Austin. He's not doing anything. He still has five food saturation from the start of the game and like points one exhaustion points. Moron. Okay, now that we understand the underlying mechanics of hunger, let's look at how utterly ridiculous it is in Minecraft. And in order to really dive deep into that, we're gonna have to look at one of the most fundamental cornerstones of human society, bread. Bread on its surface is simple. It's the seeds of the wheat plant taken and ground into an ultra fine powder. You add some water and technically you could be done now. You do have to knead it, of course, but uh, in theory, you can make bread with just flour and water. It does take a while for wild yeast to propagate, but with that waiting, you get something extraordinary, a nutritious, portable, long lasting food that tastes incredible. Entire civilization have been founded under its banner and entire civilizations have crumbled to dust in its absence. Bread is a fundamental building block of human civilization, second possibly only to rice, and it is the key to understanding just how out of control the Minecraft protagonist's voracious appetite is, and dang it, now I'm hungry! Anyway, taking our newfound mechanics plus some in-game testing I did to determine that the Minecraft protagonist can jump approximately to 2.824 times a second, I figured out the fastest rate in general a minecat- minecat? Really, Austin? I would play minecat. I would do it. I figured out the fastest rate in general a Minecraft player can starve to death. Like, if you made a game right now in hardcore mode, how quickly could you die by starvation? And it is surprisingly fast. If you're sprinting while jumping, you end up burning a remarkable total of 1.096 exhaustion points per second. If you start with the max of 20 food saturation points and 20 food level points, how long would it take you to starve to death doing this? Well, well, you're gonna be able to sprint and jump for your first 20 saturation and 14 food points, which is approximately, well, no, it is exactly 136 exhaustion points, which means you could sprint and jump for about two whole minutes before you couldn't do it anymore. At this point in time, our rate of exhaustion diminishes greatly, down from 1.096 to 0.141 points per second, because without sprinting, jumping is our best option, and you cannot sprint if you're only at six food points. Technically, you can eke out another uh, 0.005-ish per seconds-ish by breaking blocks, but this is really so small as to be meaningless. Sitting there jumping means it'll take another about 2.8, almost three minutes to completely diminish our food bar, which is where finally the food tick timer becomes irrelevant. As every four seconds, you will lose one point or half a heart of health, giving you 80 seconds to find something to eat before you keel over and die. All of these times add up to a whopping 6 minutes and 14 seconds it would take you at peak performance to starve to death completely from being fully fed. Given that Minecraft takes place in a world 72 times faster than our own, this means that more realistically, Steve or Alex can starve to death in just over 7 hours, which is remarkably quick. Which brings us back to bread, because this is the good stuff. A loaf of French bread in its entirety is worth about 1200 calories of bioavailable energy to us, and using this we can determine just how many calories our little protagonist is consuming just to live. Bread in Minecraft is worth 5 food points and 6 saturation points, giving it a total capacity of 14 points combined. Did you, did you really write 14 there, Austin? Really 14? How is anyone going to trust your math if you say 6 plus 5 is 14? Freaking idiot. It's 11! Anyway, 11 points multiplied by 4 to account for exhaustion points can weather about 44 exhaustion points before being used up, meaning its calorie to exhaustion point ratio is 27 to 1. At peak exertion, Steve can rip through this 1200 calories in just 40 seconds, which we do gotta multiply by 72 to get our real world time of 48 minutes, making a sprinting and jumping Steve consume roughly 0.41 calories per second, or 20 
24 calories per minute, which is actually almost exactly what sprinting takes up to a normal human. That's uh, kind of interesting and surprisingly accurate, but it does get worse or, or, or better because Olympic sprinters only sprint for about like 9 to 15 seconds. But as long as you keep cramming food into Steve or Alex, they can sprint essentially forever, which is where their real superpower is. 100% efficient calorie absorption and use. Calories put into Steve and Alex can be utilized immediately and without delay, which is something we do not possess as human beings. And the benefits of this evolutionary adaptation become more pronounced when you consider something that I've been leaving out this entire time. The Minecraft protagonist has Wolverine levels of healing factor. Steve and Alex can heal from nearly fatal wounds just by waiting it out for a few hours, as long as they have the calorie reserve to support it. In fact, they can do nearly anything as long as they have enough food in them. Healing requires the highest amount of exhaustion points of 6 points every 4 seconds, but the returns are massive! A single loaf of bread from calories alone can provide over 7 points of health of regenerated healing! And if you have enough bread on you, Alex and Steve become literal superheroes who can sprint, run, jump, dig, swim, and fight literally forever. The max exhaustion points I calculated you could reasonably get per second is 2.8, meaning a single loaf of bread of 1200 calories produces a whopping 18, adjusted for time scale, minutes of superhero level feats, making it possible to burn over 3800 calories per hour while fighting and healing and doing other superhero stuff. Straight. No sleep. They don't need to sleep at all. With only 76 loaves of bread, Alex or Steve would have enough calories to go on a 24 hour rampage of destruction, burning 91,666 calories in 24 hours without sleeping. Can you do that? Can you go down to the grocery store right now and clear out all the bread aisle and take on entire armies? I, I bet not. All this super powered athleticism putting them on par with Superman does come with a cost. It is very, very easy to overexert yourself and starve to death. That is the consequence of having calories immediately available to you. It's like being a hummingbird, but kind of worse. Their metabolism is running so fast that it has to refuel every 10 minutes or they risk starving to death as their bodies literally eat their own muscles for sustenance until they can't fly anymore. And well, you know what happens to wild birds that can't fly? Not good. This also means that they'd be a um, going to the bathroom a lot. Like, a lot. Like, enough that they could maybe propel themselves forward by jet-powered waste like some sort of horrific fighter rocket. Please make the waste pink, Tanya! And frankly, I would say that it's worth it. There's plenty of food in Minecraft, and they can have at it. If anything, I think this demystifies something I've always wondered about Wolverine. That dude's calorie requirements have to be utterly through the roof. Can you imagine how many cheeseburgers that dude has to pound a way to make up for healing a traumatic brain injury? It's a lot, I bet. Sincerely, Austin. I just want to put out a personal thank you to my patrons who have made this show and everything possible. We survived the pandemic because of you guys. And I want to shout out specifically Matthew Ridge, John Rozick, Miss Kendra, Ronald Coleman, Alan Hagers, Edit MTP, Nicholas Bullinger, Marissa Resnick, and Loretta Mazurf at the high tier levels of support. If you want to support this show too, you can go down to patreon.com slash thescienceyt. We would love to have you there. It's a good time. You get a Discord role and all that stuff. Bye. Bye.